Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about life in the trenches and we're going to try and relive some of the experiences that perhaps my grandfather's generation, your great great grandfather's generation might have lived through in the period of 1914 to 1918. You know, almost a hundred years ago, last week I saw one man who was alive in the so Battle of the Somme, 1916, still alive now, 110 years of age. Absolutely fantastic. Perhaps one of you could think, why in those days, why did they have trench warfare? What was the idea of trenches? James? Oh, and to secure a position. To secure a position, yeah. Why was it useful to be in a trench? Why might have someone wanted to have been in a trench, Sammy? To protect themselves. Absolutely, because if you were out in open ground, you were, you were vulnerable to snipers and machine gun fire. So that, you know, by the end of this, uh, this lesson, we want to think about how trenches were designed and why they were, why they were designed that way, what life would have been like for an ordinary soldier in the trench, uh, what were the dangers, certainly we're thinking about machine gun fire, sniper fire, and we're going to also consider the differences between the English trenches, the French trenches, and the German trenches, and the standard of living for the soldiers was very different depending on what side you were on. The English trench, as many, many English things, it had a specific standard that it had to be dug to. Now, if you were a soldier out on the Salisbury Plain, it was no problem. You dug into the nice, dry soil and you dug seven feet deep, two foot six wide, and you saw exactly what we've got on there. Duck boards that stopped the water logging and the mud. You could walk on a nice wooden surface. When you went out to the Somme and it rained hard, it was a different story. Because what might have happened, Richard, when you got out to the Somme and it rained hard? Um, the duck board would have lifted up and it wouldn't be able to walk on the duck boards. The duck boards might have floated on the water, the, the sides of the trenches fell in, and it became an absolute quagmire. As men tried to walk on this mud, what used to happen was their boots were torn off their feet and they ended up walking in barefoot. It was an absolute nightmare to live in. It was nowhere near as pleasant as the generals who had taught them and who had written out the plans for digging trenches. It was not quite like what they thought at all. There were, of course, on the Western fr Front in, uh, in France, there were hundreds and hundreds of miles of trenches. At one point, the Western Front went from almost as far as Calais in the west of France, right across France, and down to Switzerland. Absolutely hundreds of miles of trenches, all dug by hand, and all dug military precision. That was an aerial shot that was taken uh, by one of the very first biplanes in 1917, showing very uniform shapes of trenches. On that picture you can see there that flooding was a constant problem for them. In the summer of 1916 it was particularly wet after the Battle of the Somme. And you know, these guys, they suffered terribly. If you think, when they were in their trenches, they couldn't leave the trenches to go to the toilet. They had to dig a side trench and that was their toilet. Well, of course, there was no problem with that unless it rained hard and the trenches flooded and all the contents of their toilet used to flood back into the trenches. It was a vile place. It stunk. The, the people were, were covered with lice. The soldiers were covered with lice. There were rat-infested trenches living on bodies. These men used to dig, dig the trenches and as they extended the trenches, they would dig and an arm would appear out of the mud where someone had been buried weeks, months, years even beforehand. It was not a pleasant experience for these guys. These were hard men who suffered badly. In that, in that picture, a genuine picture from that era, almost a hundred years old, and we can see there this trench is being invaded. And often at night time when people were sat quietly in the trench, the guns had stopped, the bombing had stopped, there would be parties from the other side, little missions would go across no man's land, covered by the dark, sheltered where they could from broken tree stumps, and invade other trenches, capturing or killing. Capturing? Why might they want to capture people? Nicole, why might they want to capture the enemy? To uh, hold them hostage. Hold them hostage. What about questioning? To get information out of them. To get information, and in those days they would get information by whatever means necessary. The trenches were of course very well defended. In front of them there were absolutely reams and reams and reams of barbed wire, almost impenetrable. 
Bombs couldn't break barbed wire. Machine gun fire wouldn't break barbed wire. The men were often, uh, this was the, often the case, they were caught and entrapped on the barbed wire and just cut to pieces. Disaster. Now we see a, a different type of, uh, of trench system here. Uh, it says a firing step. You had the bottom of the duckboard, like you said, but a very much more organized and well-constructed trench there. Not the reinforced sides, not just mud sides to the trenches. The firing step where they would stand on, take a few sniper shots at the enemy, and then go back down again. This German soldier, there he is on his firing step, a very nice trench. If you've got to go and be involved in trench warfare, that is nice. No mud in there, in no way that the enemy are going to be uh, affecting you because you're down low. I mean, that trench is probably, when he's off that, uh, that uh, firing step that he's on, it's probably nine feet deep. What's he doing, though? What's this guy doing? Abby, what do you think he might be doing there? Is he looking to see the enemy? He's looking to see the enemy, and I bet he's a sniper. And if he sees anyone in the English trench, puts their head out to have a look, they're going to have a bullet between the eyes. And there's a sort of rifle that he had. Uh, on that rifle, you see it's a funny sort of a, it's a, a sort of an S-shape type rifle. What might be one of the advantages, Lewis, of having a, a rifle that shape? Um, so they can put it over the top of the trench. Okay, so the top of the rifle could go out over the top of the trench and the sniper hasn't got to expose himself. But Chris, on the left hand side there are two arrows and it says, what are these? Any idea what they could be? Are they mirrors? They are mirrors. It's almost like a periscope so that the sniper is 100% safe in the trench. The, uh, the barrel of his gun is stuck over the top of the trench. He's got mirrors to see if there's any enemy about and he has got no risk to himself. What a great bit of kit. Of course, you know, you weren't very safe in the trenches and that much as military bombing was very rudimentary in those days, they just used to fire bomb after bomb after bomb and you could be sat there having a chat, having your tea, having a bit of quiet time and bang, the bombs go off next to you and these three guys here, they're lucky, that one's gone off ten feet away from them. It's made them jump but they live to fight another day. The next one might go off in their trench. No different though, there was no evil German attack, there was no evil British attack, there was the same sort of attacking on both sides. At one time the British would be attacked, the next day the Germans would be attacked. There we have the British soldiers are fighting back and there's a German, this one on the top of the uh, embankment there, well he might have been hit, he might be covered in shrapnel, he might be dying, he might be losing blood. The ones down here behind the cannon, they look a little safer. The French had no more sophisticated trenches than the English. There's a picture of the French medics carrying away a wounded soldier. Again, very rudimentary systems, not very good protection, mud-ridden trenches, not a very pleasant environment. Just before we finish and we summarise, the soldiers used to line up in the trenches and they would have a time, zero hour, when they were going to attack. And zero hour was indicated by short repeated blasts on a whistle. The soldiers lined up. They knew that some of them would face instant death. They waited and they obeyed orders. If they didn't obey orders, they would live in fear of being killed by their own officers. So they stood, they waited for the whistle, the whistle went, they went over the top, over the top, which would mean life or death. They may make it safely and they may have attacked the enemy, they may have taken the enemy position, they may have been machine gun fired in the process, they may have been blown to, to pieces in the process. War was a horrible, horrible time. It still is. In this war, it was more particularly horrible because of the intensity of numbers involved. Ten million people died in a four-year period. Okay, let's bring it together, what we've spoken about, about life in the trenches. For any side, it was not a pleasant experience. It was not nice. You were away from home. You were rat infested. You were lice infested. Realistically, though, who had the better conditions to live in? The Germans, the French, or the English? 
James. The Germans. The Germans. And why, why would the Germans have a better, a better life in the trenches? Why do you think, Katie? Because they were more well built. They were well built. The construction was very, very different, wasn't it? Um, how, Richard, how were the German trenches more, uh, better constructed? They were built more and less up, built uh, wood. They used a lot more wood for shuttering, didn't they? Yes, and perhaps they were the, the the whole process behind it had more thought into it, didn't they? The rigid design that the that the British commanders has had was absolutely fantastic. If you were in perfect conditions, once you went into the battlefield of the of the Somme, where it was absolutely waterlogged, it was a different story. Thank you very much for listening so carefully, and. Uh, Next time we're going to look a little bit more about some of the major battles of the First World War.